Moving on with our notes on storage, we're going to talk about types of memories. But we're talking about them in storage because it's important on where they are stored. Okay, so first let's talk about implicit memories. Memories that you are not consciously aware of. And you think to yourself, whoa, like how, how was it a memory then? How do I have a memory if I'm not consciously aware of it? Because these memories can impact your behavior. Okay, so an example. The first time you meet someone, you, let's say, instantly dislike them. The implicit memory is at work because they unconsciously remind you of your worst enemy, let's say. Let me give you an even better example. Do you remember learning to brush your teeth when you were like one or two years old? Probably not. However, does the memory of brushing your teeth impact your behavior? You're like, uh, I don't know what you're asking. The answer is yes, because you hopefully brushed your teeth at some point today. You brushed your teeth at some point today. So the memory of brushing your teeth has impacted your behavior even though you cannot consciously recall or be aware of the memory of learning. A lot of procedural memories like learning to drive, learning to curl your hair or brush your teeth or kick a soccer ball, those are procedural memories. Most of those are implicit because you don't remember or are not consciously aware of learning them. Another example of an implicit memory, when I was little, here's a little um, information about Mrs. Rice. When I was little, I, was, I don't know, less than two years old, playing at the pool at a family get together, I take a five gallon bucket and I go to fill it up in the pool. Well, that's heavier than me, so boom, in I go to the pool. My dad jumps in, I didn't know how to swim, I was less than two years old, um, and my dad jumps in and rescues me, right, and save the day, I was totally fine. I was in the water for maybe two seconds. Here's the thing, that was rather scary. I am not consciously aware of that memory. My parents simply just told me about it. However, although I'm not fearful of water itself, I love being in the water and swimming in summertime, woohoo! But if someone goofs around with me in the water and dunks me, like, oh no, I'm coming up ready to throw some bows or something because I don't, whew, I don't like that. And like the scene in Titanic where these people are like gonna drown, boom, no, it gives me severe anxiety. So I don't have the conscious memory of almost drowning in the pool, but it definitely impacts my behavior. You could say this like with maybe you were bit by a dog when you were little, you don't remember, but you're afraid of dogs. It impacts your behavior. The opposite would be an explicit memory. This is intentional or conscious recollection of information. So you're deliberately trying to remember something. Okay, so it's the conscious recollection of information. So when someone asks you about your summer vacation, you can consciously attempt to remember, yay, when we went to the Outer Banks in Alabama, this is what we did, I went like surfing, or I don't know, something like that. Or remembering information when you're taking a test. And that, okay, number three, it's asking about explicit memories. I know that explicit memories are the conscious recollection of information I have learned. Okay, so that would mean that this one is correct. You're consciously bringing back that information. We've kind of talked about this one of procedural memory. These are memories for skills and habits. Most procedural memories are implicit as you don't have to think about how to after you've learned them. So walking is one, riding a bike or driving, okay? Um, but you also don't remember learning how to do some of those, hence why it's implicit. A declarative memory, these are memories for factual information like the names, faces of people you know, dates, etc. Usually these are explicit memories and require the conscious mental effort to remember them. So recalling the directions for driving to a specific location that you haven't been to before, right? Eventually after you've driven there multiple times, it might become automatic and implicit, but the first few times you drive there, it is declarative. Then we have two types of declarative memory, semantic and episodic, which we've kind of talked about in a set of notes before. Semantic is all about meaning, okay? That word semantic means meaning. So it's memory for things that carry any meaning, like language and facts, general knowledge and concepts, the I know that facts, and this is much of what you learn in school. An episodic memory is one for biographical details of our individual lives. Think of it like an episode in your life. The I remember when memories. 
So it stores temporal coding like time tags to identify when and context coding to indicate where.